I'm back. I'm back, y'all. We're gonna try this again. We are going to try this again. Correct thinning locks. I have three major things you want to look at when you are dealing with thinning locks. Okay, the first thing is in the realm of prevention. You never want to initiate a service on hair that is actively thinning or balding. I repeat, you never want to initiate a service on hair that is actively thinning and balding. You'd be surprised by how many times that this can possibly be done. And if that is not happening when their service is initiated, but it's happening, the thinning and balding is happening sometime along the journey. The second thing you want to do, once you identify that the hair is indeed thinning and balding or the locks are thinning, is that you want to take a look at these key areas. See if you need to adjust something that is being done technically in the process of the maintenance. The scalp tension, is it too tight? Is it being tightened too tight? Um, are any of the methods and techniques actually causing the hair to thin? You want to look at also the tools. It is, It has been known uh, in the past and even the current um, time for people to have the particular tool that they use actually be a contributor to hair breakage. It can actually be painful, some particular tools. They can snag hair. It can rip out hair, and which then can lead to the thinning of the, the lock space, of the lock itself. Also, if there are hardened fat ends or a lot of hooks and crooks and bumps along the lock that are hard, that can actually also damage hair. If that is being interlocked, interwoven through, it can actually catch and rip. And sometimes if people are going very fast, it can snag. And what you also want to do, an assessment to the best of your ability about what you see. And then if it's beyond your scope of knowledge, make necessary referrals. If you're noticing that there's possibly a medical issue, has something going on dermatology wise, or even mental health wise. You want to make the assessment for yourself. Now let's get to the third. If you need to create a stronger foundation, you may need to combine locks. A professionally skilled or trained loctician, whether they can strengthen that entire lock by combining it, because there are some more technique than just putting two locks together where you can actually strengthen the entire lock. You can actually decide whether you want to keep it two or make it one. There are a few ways to do that as well, where you um, can keep 
you can keep the consistency and sizing for all the locks around it. So combining locks could also be an option if it is there is no other option to increase the strength of that lock before it breaks. Now, there are additional ways to also correct and address thinning locks, and that would be some more advanced technique that could utilize um, could utilize the addition of hair or locks, but I don't mean slapping on an extension on a thin piece of hair. We're, we're not for a permanent style. We're not doing that. <laughs> They're going to actually further, further um, damage the, the situation. And so there are things to do that can be a temporary or a permanent solution, depending on what is happening and the, the professional assessment that's being made. So if you notice um, that the area can be treated and the hair can be restored, there are some things that can be done on an advanced level temporarily to continue to have that full look or that refined finished look. As the hair is healing, as the scalp is healing, there are some things that can be done. There are some things that might be able to be done permanently. Um, I have definitely addressed and created solutions for people who had bald, balding that had previously happened or they had thin hair. But it was always important to go back to the first point that I said, to make sure that the hair scalp is not in an active state of thinning. And people change, life changes. So maybe what wasn't actively thinning has begun to at some point um, in your process. And then you have to be able to understand what's going on and then how to best address that situation without further damaging. Uh, if you're interested, I actually have another video where uh, I'll link it, where you can, um, where I talk about thinning in microlocks, and I talk about some common causes and some solutions. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about going a little bit more into this discussion and hearing some other ways to address this, definitely can click on um, this video and you can watch that as well. So if you have any further questions, you can always hit me up, hit us up, there's a team of us, in uh, any of our social media platforms that you see on your screen. You can um, shoot us an inbox. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> so I actually want to address questions live because I... Um, I have a linked another video where I've gone through it more and I can actually probably show you that if I can get that queued up and then not have tech issues. But I do want to address, um, you have, there's a question here. Uh, you're currently having this issue with menopause and mental health. And first of all, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I respect that you feel um, comfortable enough to share your information that you shared with us. So you need to, um, so I need to get my nervous system in order. You are absolutely like, this is an area that um, I especially like to talk about uh, being a, a, a therapist, mental health professional, and um, a hair business owner and stylist, and a woman that is in her 40s, um, who've had a lot, have had a lot of clients in menopause. And that is, your, that is, you seem like, that's like the trifecta you have going on with your hormonal changes, the mental health with the stress, and then, I mean, hormones in, in general, being a woman. And so um, in regards to your question, um, I don't know if you had a question. I think I think I just wanted to address and comment on that. And thank you for sharing that. Um, what I would say first and foremost is to um, work out stabilizing and balancing your hormones um, medically. So if there's any support that you have, I'm a, I'm a big um, advocate for herbs. So like an apothecary, I used to use herbs to support me through the hormonal changes that I had in my pregnancy and postpartum recovery. So um, similarly, our hormones are 
you know, trying to stabilize themselves or going through a bunch of things. So there was a bunch of blends. I had to consult. I had a, also had a nutritionist and my, my midwife was um, like a holistic nutritionist, but um, she did this testing on my body to see which organs were overcompensating for weekend ones to see where stress was impacting me, et cetera. And so I say, I like to say it's all connected. It, our hair kind of just, our hair and skin um, really show what's happening internally. So the inflammation that's caused from stress is, is, is really quite serious. So as far as mental health, I also know that that is a huge part of um, a, contributing to other people's um, illness. Oh, God, I can't speak. Illnesses and ailments is exasperated by the state, their mental health. So stress, um, depression, anxiety, it's all tight in there. Oh, yes, ashwagandha and biotin, definitely. Um, ashwagandha, I love ashwagandha. But again, everybody's unique. So there might be a particular thing someone's experiencing because there's um, something in their system that's stressed out more. And so now the body is trying to overcompensate and wearing down, you know, so it depends on what people are going through, but I definitely like ashwagandha. Um, and then I think, yeah, just, just the whole attack at all angles, the mental health, know how to deal with the stress, the dietary is a big one, but it's not just one thing sometimes. You're welcome. Um, I'm not a medical doctor, but I do know some connections between mental health and the body being um, a licensed therapist and also um, a microlactician for 15 years. There's a lot of things I've seen with women. A lot of my clients are in that, in the age range of um, a lot of hormonal shifts, birthing, just a lot of things. So um, I might not even, I don't know what I have going on the rest of this video. Um, I'm just speeding along here. I think I shared the handles. And I do think that I will show a different one if you are guys are up to me getting the other video. Let me make myself full screen here. And if you stick around, um, if you have patience, I'm gonna see if I can queue up that other video where I talked about hair thinning. But if you have any more questions about how it affects Microlots in particular, it's my niche here. So um, this is also one of the reasons why I say when you make when people make their bases so tiny with five strands of hair because they want extremely microscopic um, <laughs> blocks. I don't really say it like that, but I just feel like um, I heard another lactician say she notices the edges um, on those with really, really tiny, tiny locks look like they are stuff they suffer more. Um, she didn't, I'm saying nicely, what she said was slang. She just said like, she notices that when they're really tiny, but I also notice when there are hormonal changes and things happening, it is a nice recipe for those locks to, for the hair to, um, you to lose locks. So you got the combination of tension. If there's a like traction alopecia caused by that, if there's postpartum alopecia, there's stress, if there, you know, anything that happens, any little thing. And then the hair will thin out. Um, come on, computer. So let me queue up. Let me see if there's any um, questions. I know y'all not looking at anything. So I could put a little picture. And so this actually a client on the right was our install. Um, and her hair, her hair was fine then. And so I sized it to accommodate strength because we weren't going to do teeny tiny just because someone's hair is thin or fine doesn't mean you have to go microscopic either again you want to talk about strength and base to prevent thinning to correct thinning we talked about in this video early about um strengthening the base via combining but that's the that's not the only i don't really recommend doing that um unless it has to be done because now it, it kind of it lessens the number of locks. It's just uh, a couple of things that, that may not be um, what you want. But it, like I said, there's so many reasons for thinning hair. You are creating locks on a foundation of hair, period. This health of that hair 
the state of that hair, the state of the person under the hair, and everything else is going to contribute to the health of that hair. So to put locks on top of hair that is already, pro um, well, that's already thin, like I talked about earlier in the video, understanding if it's progressing or if it's just how, how it is. Because I have done a full head of extensions on a client with thin hair. Her hair was fine. It grew 15 years later. She still has her locks. They're long. They look great. She's never really going to have thick, thick, thick hair. But um, during my assessment, I had to make sure that her hair wasn't actively thinning. I wasn't trying to find a quick fix to cover and throw extensions on top of it. So also extensions in the first two photos was a person that was actively seeking um actively involved in derma, dermatological treatment. I don't even know if that's a word. I think derma, 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 <laughs> dermatologist treatment. And she wanted not to just have to shave off her locks that she had on her head. We found a temporary solution via, and this was a few years ago because the techniques have been further refined. Um, and, and, but she had a, um, we created units with extensions to go over her hair in a way where it did not pull or exasperate further damage so that she can still address and treat what is happening. That was only a temporary quick fix. It is never permanent. Um, so people should know that also when they are investing money into getting solutions for thinning hair, if you do that, um, and if the technique is not done well, it could actually make it worse. Okay. So there was there was ways that we we could do this so that it could be a temporary thing to give her the look and appearance so she would not have to put a wig on or cut them off or anything right away. And those are some there's um more to it. I may break it down in some of the extension info sessions that I've done in the past or that I will do. So if you're interested in how that process works, I would say stay connected. Okay, let's now see about the other video. <clears throat> um, no questions? No likes, like on the, like the video, engage for, for me to know that this is content that you want me to keep expounding on, adding information on, you hear it. Um, definitely want to boost my engagement. I, I just checked all my, like my analytics. There's 12,000 hits on certain pages and things of mine and the engagement doesn't seem to make sense. So I know you guys email and give feedback and tell me the information is helpful, but I would love to see the like or the comment or the whatever, um, just to let me know. If not, that's fine too, you know, definitely speak your truth, but I would love to know if this is helpful. It also helps me in knowing what new videos to make because I will be making consistently more videos that hopefully, okay, that hopefully are what you're looking for. Um, because that first video was acting glitchy, I didn't have the other queued up, so I am looking for the other thinning. That's me Monday, moisturize, microlax. Um, Okay. I'm gonna go check to see if there's any comments. Okay. Was this a prosthesis? Mm, not quite. Things were still custom to how her hair was growing and coming in. So um it wasn't just a one size fits all or one size. It was because what sometimes does happen is that people's hair grows in with the treatment is successful. And then now we're starting to create new locks with a strong foundation. And then we can um, work around those new locks. So we're not covering um, what she has, but working with it, the fullness yet. So about a third of that picture is extension work. Um, I have others I can show you a little bit. Okay, no worries, Shandri. You can see the replay. The first video had so many glitches. I had to switch computers. Um, yeah, so because there's never a, a, a one a one quick answer, 
Never, never should there be. If anybody's telling you something like this is what you have to do, they're not a, a professional has to take in co into consideration a bunch of factors in order to have a lasting result. Right. So maintaining thinning locks, I can give you some some tips on just how not to prevent uh, rip your hair out, how to damage it. And we did talk about that in the beginning. So if you caught it, if you're catching it midway, I would definitely say watch this video from the beginning. It does not glitch this time, this live. So um, I did talk about checking um, the tools, the tension. That's why I talk about tool types and usage a lot in the training, a lot in um, the information I give, because that had been a real significant factor in um, some people, at least early in the years, were coming about uh, hair ripping, pain, damage. And we found a consistent reason with these clients, these transfer clients coming to uh, coming to me, me and my team at the time at Brooklyn, New York. And so that is one of them, a big thing, but I also noticed a few other things. And it, so when it comes to the quality of the lock and how it, how, when it is getting retightened via an interwoven method, how that can be damaging, especially if we have speedy Gonzalez <laughs> locks, locticians who are racing to finish, which happened a lot um, over the years. It would be like a race. I would have to, have to make a video and say, you know, speed doesn't equal quality because when you're going fast, um, that's the ripping, the tearing. And there's a lot of people that need, that have some um, bumps or ridges on their locks and it's catching and it's ripping. And that was thinning out the base little by little. When you're talking about small micro size locks, the base is, is crucial. The strength, the number of, of hairs in that. And so not just, it's not just um, external things that'll rip that out. It could be things going on internally. So what I was, what I would always say is to make sure um, that, you take those things in consideration that you are, that quality of the lock is good and it's not catching. So maybe you need to do the repairs on the lock first before you start retightening. Maybe you need to make sure and always should be a scan from root to tip, always. We're not just focusing on new growth if we're talking, if we want really high quality, strong locks, we want to focus on the entire lock. If I feel that those, the ends are hard and fat or there is something there, now I need to be more mindful of how I'm going to be putting that, pulling that lock through. Maybe one angle it's fine, but then I do the other angle and now it's catching on the hook on the other side of the lock. A lot of things like that happen. Um, uh, there's so many factors when it comes to the biggest thing, though, has always been inflammation in the scalp. Inflammation, a lot of it, again, is internal, medical, stress, could be product reaction. It could be a scalp issue. Those things were the main reasons. Stress, stress, stress. Divorces were happening with my clients. Um, medical issues were happening. And that's when I noticed, particularly, especially this client in the picture and another client who was uh, another extension, she was an extension model for old photo shoots. I don't have those queued up because I wasn't prepared to talk about extensions, but they had thinning that we were temporarily providing solution for. And she was going through a nasty divorce. And so... Um, she had to, I would always tell people, go to a medical professional, obviously, um, your dermatologist, your medical doctor, and, and try to really understand what's happening. Pinpoint that. Maybe there's some medications or natural solutions that'll work. They're not. Hair growth oils work, you know, to an extent, but they're not magic. They're not magic. So I do, and I don't even promote, I don't even promote one time my hair oil because this conversation goes deeper than that. But there are some things and herbs that could really help that. Um, so there's a combination of things. So that's, that'll kind of be my not one size fits all answer, but I would say for multiple angles. Um, how do I to class lock restoration? Use your afraid to add weight. Yeah, and restoration to me means. I don't know. I, I don't want to go into the deep, you know, details of what that what you got, but I would hope that it would include um, some other ways to restore the hair that is growing out of the scalp, as opposed to covering up anything coming out the scalp over and over and over and over again. Um, but lock restoration is good for yeah, the, along the lock, you know, reattaching, strengthening weak areas, definitely. Definitely. That is a part that could be a part of thinning locks. It doesn't always just have to thin at the root. It could thin midway. It could thin at the towards the end. Okay. Speedy. Okay. If you're a speedy loctician, um, 
Yeah, with the combination of great skill, then that's that's the that's the great. <laughs> that's the what do you call it? holy grail? You know, someone that's efficient and quick, but does a really great job, and that is very very possible. But um, as long as one isn't over, it is overshadowed by just getting someone in and out quickly. Um, I miss that to trust the clients need extensions to thin in like your first picture. So do they need extensions or do they need some other things? And then there's something that, uh, another solution, you know, um, so that's something to think about. I don't know their um, situation, but, um, there have there I've seen where things weren't are not done well and the extension process could actually make the thinning worse. Um, or the thinning could just be getting worse on its own and the extensions are becoming less and less effective and more and more time consuming and burdensome. Um, and just, you know, it, it all depends, you know. Um, I need to slow it down. I'm very careful. That's good. That's good. You're careful. If you're careful and you're doing a great job, um, you may not need to slow it down, but just be just making sure you're you're mindful. That's great. Um, <laughs> I'm like I'm not um, I'm the person I would like take my time. I had to learn to be faster because I used to be, um, yeah, like looking at the lock and all the like the holes. I was sitting there closing it up, and so now I mean that was way many years ago. Then I then I had to create a way to handle that so that you weren't, you weren't, um, you know, feeling like you're spending so much time and it's not being appreciated or the client's not feeling like they're sitting forever. And so it's like a clear way to do it so that they know if they're going to sit a little bit longer, exactly why. And they have a choice to make at some point too. Like, yeah, no, we can do that next time. Because you don't want somebody like, I got to go to an appointment and I'm still here and she taking forever <laughs> as opposed to I'm so happy that my loctician is such a careful loctician that spends, she spends the time she needs to, to make sure my hair is right. You want that kind of energy. And there's a way to kind of craft that where people feel like they're in control. Yes, requiring. I said I was going to queue up. So y'all, um, I'm not, I'm not seeing it here in my current stash, but I'm going to play, let's see what the rest of this video is saying, y'all. And excuse me, you can always hit me up, hit us up. There's a team of us in uh, any of our social media platforms that you see on your screen. You can uh, live, you can interact, you can post a, a question on the replay. I'm fast forwarding on purpose, y'all in the comments okay i'm just talking okay all right we're gonna remove this i don't know what that video was okay <laughs> it might have been that i was in process of editing <laughs> so i put up the edited one that did not have the cleaned up ending with the heck um lock types Ooh, there's a lot of there's a lot of videos in here Lord have mercy why can't i just search thinning Okay, it's on my YouTube. Um, it's not in here. All right. Okay, so I will show that another day. Oh, you said should repairs be included in the retie appointment? It can or it can't be. Um, it depends on depends on you, the conversations you have with your client, um, what you feel is fair for you, but I do have recommendations, which I will be talking about with my team at the pricing workshop this Thursday at 7 p.m. <laughs> it's a small little plug, but we have a pricing um, pricing workshop for cert for Michael Lock Mastery Certified Pros this Thursday. We, um, we're adding on to the first pricing workshop, and we do talk about that in depth because there will be... Um, some changes that you may make to your pricing depending on which option you choose. And there's one that we recommend. I recommend that's worked very well for my clients over the past 15 years that I feel is fair. Um, and also gives you, you know, it's fair for the client, fair for you as far as compensation. Yeah. So if you think it should be additional and a separate appointment and absolutely go for doing it that way. Um, 
Definitely. Good points, though. Good points. Um, I'm going to see what else I, because if I can answer anything that I was already going to show in the video, the only other thing I would show in the videos would maybe be some pictures of um, some more pictures. So let me think if there's anything else I want to add to this. Mm, if you have any more questions about this thinning process, remember, again, to recap, there are a few factors that you should be looking into. It is never just one thing um, for everyone. What may be affecting one client may not be affecting another client. So it takes a lot of skill, know-how, and professionalism to really understand what is happening with that client's hair and what would be some of the best solutions. Um, the most important thing is, is this thinning, progressively thinning more and more each appointment, each time. Where the locks were on before, now maybe that, that it's just getting to be a real skinny, skinny strand base. So that's something then you know that, okay. Some people continue to retighten all the way until that person loses those locks. Um, but even if it's beyond your realm, as a professional, you still have to make a call, a judgment call, have a conversation about where the scope of your services end and where they need to be referred for more support. After you look at all the things that you could possibly be doing to contribute to that and you've ruled it all out, right? You notice, oh, the tool seems fine. Um, the, um, it's not catching their hair. I've, I've assessed the entire lock of their hair. It looks like it's in decent condition. It's not pulling or snagging. I, I know how to repair big lumps and stuff. So like, if you look at all that um, and you're like, so there's nothing that I'm doing um, and now their hair is still progressively getting um, more thin, then that's where um, that referral to see a medical, uh, but I, you know, I suggest you go see your doctor or dermatologist if you can. Um, you can always like say comments, but we're not able, you know, not able to diagnose anyone um, unless that is your background. Because some people that do have a background in that to say, oh, you have this, whatever. But I would recommend they do that and they consult with you regarding the products and topical treatments or anything that they have to do to treat that. And will that interfere with the process of, the, of um, their services with you? Okay, so that's another thing. Um, but yeah, the biggest biggest contributors I've seen to hair thinning have been stress and an internal scalp inflammation, period. Scalp inflammation has multiple reasons why. Um, but I've seen that to be the number one thing. Not so much, sometimes the... the things that we do are retightening, but that's not usually the most, the majority of the clients have something going on internally. Um, sometimes it's per, it's temporary. It can be restored. Sometimes it's permanent. Exactly. Alopecia is one, but then, you know, there's so many more different scalp. Um, I know what the video is. I'll do that maybe for the next Ask Me Monday if you want, if y'all want to, if y'all care to hear about it. <laughs> um, I did talk about hair growth. Um, I cited, I did did my research, I went, did my homework and pulled out a lot of information regarding hair, hair growth, the process, the shedding process, what impacts that. Um, and I went into it a little bit more and it was, it was just, I think it was really insightful for the people that, that found the information helpful. Yep, male, female pattern baldness. And that is huge. Okay. Then it's, I don't know if y'all can see mom. You can't see my mouth. The areas that you see in that first picture are so common for Black women. That top part. The biggest extension jobs I've done in early, gosh, I did a real big job way back about 2011. The whole head. Um, uh, if y'all would like, I'll do an extensions presentation another Monday and I'll show y'all those pictures. Two and a half feet of locks, blonde and black blended. Um, bald, male, her baldness was at the top primarily. She had hair on the side. So just like a man, when you see a man thinning at the top, she had very similar. So we had, we worked around that. And again, that was my first big job. It was many years ago. The techniques have improved a lot. I, I can, I can see the difference, but I know that that still has value in sharing that, that process, but those would not be 
that technique would not be what I would be teaching on the extensions. It would be a far better technique. <laughs> but she did wear that for, for a while, but her hair just was progressively thinning so much. I think it was a medical. And it comes a point where a person has to make a decision about their lifestyle and their lifestyle changes. We can't do that for them. And we can't tell them and force them or use our, you know, everyone has their own journeys. And unless we're their doctor, we can't tell them what to do, you know. What's that? Uh, mail, yeah. And thanks for the info on time. You are quite welcome. I'm not on camera. It's a little different. I got a bonnet on. I am <laughs> starting a detox. Speaking of internal, um, I had to listen to my body. And um, I'm embarking on a multi-day, at least 10 days of a fast and detox. I just didn't feel like... I'm surprised I have this much energy. Because the hunger is kicking in slightly. But um, I just didn't want to be on camera. Like, and then just in case I was feeling not so, not so good. But right now I feel good. And I do notice when I do this detox, my hair and skin gets better as well. And so there's a lot of power in diet and nutrition because I definitely need to be on it um, for myself and my, my weight loss journey, <laughs> but also um, mentally. So I tend to let stress less and then... Um, Stress, I tell you, is the biggest contributor to inflammation, and it gets that scalp as well as the body. So with that being said, I hope that my message, I might be all zen for the next few days if you hear me lie, because I get all this like peace when I fast, um, and I get this like clarity coming, but it is very, very helpful and beneficial. So I think if we stop, if we seek not just short-term quick solutions, but longer-term deeper solutions, we will, uh, I think we'll have... Um, really nice results that last much, much longer. We can get to the core of it, you know? Like, I think temporary is good for temporary. So, like, as you address the issue, as you heal through whatever it is, as we figure it out, we got this solution for the time being. But long-term, I think ideally is what we would want. So we will hopefully never have to, we would know why, you know, our hair, things like this and we would have a great understanding of it and then we can intervene in the ways that will be helpful for us sometimes that means lifestyle changes and that means getting rid of some people too y'all okay <laughs> all right thank you for the all <laughs> thank y'all for who came back after the, the fiasco of of um a messed up live stream earlier thank y'all for being understanding and patient and happy monday and i'll be back um, at some point, sometime, I don't know, <laughs> live again, maybe soon, but I'll see those who are in the pricing workshop, my clock mastery certified mastery. I have to say mastery several times for a reason. So don't get it confused. It's my clock mastery. Um, if you want to be a part of our program or anything, um, follow our channels. It is my clock mastery. And we are doing a workshop for certified pros on Thursday on pricing. Okay, bye. Bye, y'all. Have a good, wonderful day. Thank you. Happy healing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm hoping to drop, really going to drop some of these pounds, y'all. Because, Lord, <laughs> I look at my old video. Y'all follow me for years. Y'all see my face is nice and round. So we're hoping now we can get a couple of the, we can get some of this, this off a little bit. All right. Bye.